Hey guys, welcome to the shop. In this video series, I'm building a custom guitar. You guys are designing it and I'm going to build it and then I'm going to give it away to one of you guys. How cool is that? All you have to do to win this guitar is go to my website, spenceracoustics.com, enter into the mailing list and that'll give you a chance to win the giveaway guitar. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. There's a lot of different steps, a lot of work goes into this, so stick around and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Okay, we had a bit of a problem with the rosette voting and I'll explain to you what happened in a minute, but first let's get to building that back and let me show you exactly how it's done. To get a proper glue joint, both edges must be sanded until they're perfectly straight. Make sure you add a generous amount of glue to this joint. This is one place we don't want to have a dry glue joint. When we put our pieces together, we want to see lots of squeeze out, just like this. Now wipe off some of the glue so you can check the alignment of your pieces. Once that's done, put the top plate on. Put your strings on and now you can start applying clamping pressure. This type of jig puts pressure both downwards and pulls the pieces inwards to get a nice tight fit. Here's the big thing. New camera. Just for YouTube. <laughs> this is cool. This is really cool. There we go. Man, this, is, this feels nice. That is cool. So now, most of the rest of this video is going to be filmed on this. So I got to charge the battery and then we'll get back to all this other stuff. <laughs> so there you go. Not much of a surprise for some of the viewers out there. I had a few people already guess what it was, but this camera is really going to make for uh, a lot better videos, better video quality, especially when I'm doing overhead shots on the bench. In this video, I didn't have a wide angle lens for this camera yet, so you're going to see some of the pictures are a little bit tight uh, when I'm doing the overhead shots. But I picked up a wide angle lens for this camera now, and uh, it'll give a much wider viewpoint of what I'm, when I'm doing an overhead shot. So you guys, you guys will be able to see a lot more of what's happening. After the glue dries, we can start removing these wedges, which reduces the pressure and the clamping force on these pieces. Now we can use a little gentle persuasion with some blunt instrument to release our boards. I just use the scraper to get the big stuff off of my pieces. I don't get it all. Then I wipe it down a little bit just to check my alignment for my pieces to make sure everything fit the way I want it. Now we can remove the rest of the glue from the back. I start with the good side or the side that's going to be out and I just clean it up enough that all the glue is off. Then I stop. I don't want to go too far and risk messing up our pattern. There we go. Baby alien. I think these are like legs. There's a face up here. He's blasting some sort of beam out of his butt. I use a pretty heavy coarse grit on the drum sander. So to get those marks out of the back, I, I use a palm sander. Then I'll clean it up with a little bit of naphtha just to get the dust off and see if I've got all the scratch marks out. So far it's looking pretty good on this one. Alright, watching the results coming in for the rosette vote was, it was really cool. At the beginning the walnut thing really took off and was it seemed like it was going to get a unsurmountable lead. The stained glass window thing from Kelsey was actually keeping up quite nicely. Uh, it was still five or six votes behind or so though, so it wasn't really close at the moment. 
Then Dave's modern rosette just started rocketing to the top and all of a sudden it went from third place up into second place. And by the end of the voting, we actually had a tie between the modern Dave style and the walnut style. So there's my problem. We've got a tie. Uh, I thought about maybe putting it to another vote, but that's going to take too much time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine the two. I'm going to make uh, the modern style rosette, but also inlay some of those um, alien kind of faces in there somewhere. So we'll make it work and it'll look pretty cool. Definitely we will be unique. And what's wrong with you guys? Not one person votes for the guitar string rosette on a guitar. I mean, <laughs> that that's such a cool idea and it didn't even get one vote. Jeez. Now it's time to lay down some marks for our so we can get our back strip put in the right place and to locate where our braces are going to go. So I just make a mark about a half inch off the center of my center line. I draw out the shape of the guitar just as a reference for now and then I start laying out where the braces are going to go and this particular back it's about every three and a half inches. Although you can buy a one piece back strip for any guitar, I prefer to make mine out of leftover pieces from guitar tops. At first I cut the pieces to about an inch wide. Then I cut them down to the length that I need for whatever guitar I'm working on. Then I'll sand a little beveled edge on the side just to get me started on my shaping. I'll get both sides cleaned up and of course I'll go ahead and do that with all the pieces. Then I just do a quick cleanup. It's not really important right now because they're all different heights and we'll correct that a little bit later on. I clamp my ruler down over the lines that I marked earlier to make sure I get a nice straight edge to reference all these pieces against. Once I get them all laid out, now I can glue them in place and I make sure that all the joints are right over top where a brace is going to be. It's important to use some sort of block on top of these pieces. They're just spruce so they're really soft and they'll, they'll dent really easy. Here I'm removing all the go bars and I'm going to clean this thing up. Now I'm going to use my favorite chisel for cleaning up glue. It's a curved two cherries chisel. You'll find it listed in the description of the video. I mentioned earlier all those pieces were different heights, so I'm going to run it back through the drum sander until I get them all the same height. Square. Here's my hammer. Can't build a guitar without a good hammer. All right, so all I really try and do here is get this kind of squared up using this was the edge I used with the straight edge when we glued them, so I'll use that side, and I just want to kind of split that joint. From side to side. Then I use a razor blade to scribe where that's sitting. Do it two or three times so I can spot it. Do it a couple times on the other side. Then I set the razor blade down into my scribe mark like so. Tap it down till it's flush. Do that on the other side too. Throw that out there for a minute. Grab a chisel. Work that out of there, that little piece. Blue cleaned up underneath here. Once that's smooth, this should drop right in there and look almost invisible. 
See that? It almost invisible. Nice and tight. You can even pick up the top or the back with it. All right, so I just got to do the rest of them. Now it's time to get all these braces glued on. I put a nice medium to medium large size bead of glue on here. Once again, I don't want this to be dry. I want to make sure I have a little bit of squeeze out on both sides of the brace. You can get away with not putting as much glue on this as I'm doing right here, but you might run the risk of, uh, of a brace coming loose later on. I'd rather clean up the glue than not have enough. So I can use the notch that's in that we cut out earlier to help square up this brace that I'm putting on. I'll just kind of push it against the edge till it feels straight and then I'll drop it down in the slot. I'm using go bars here to attach it to or to put pressure down and hold the braces in place. Go bars are kind of tricky. If you don't get them right in the center of that brace, they'll come popping off and flying all over the room. So you have to be really careful with these things. I'm just going to put three braces on each each uh, three go bars on each brace and, and I'll do that on the top two. On the bottom two braces I use a little different method. Um, I'm just going to show you the way I teach my students to do so that they don't have trouble with go bars. I just put some sort of piece of wood across those as a bridge and let it hold the go bars. So there you can see it's holding them. Okay so you guys can't seem to make a decision, but I got to ask you one more time to make another decision for me. We need to know before we start bending the sides on this guitar, are we going to do a cutaway guitar or just a normal bodied guitar? Let me show you a couple so you know what I'm talking about. Now this is just a normal bodied, small, you know, my three quarter size body guitar without a cutaway. That's what it looks like. Now I don't have a three-quarter size with the with a cutaway, but there's this is an OM body and it's got a cutaway. So this is what I'm talking about. Do we want to make this part right here, which is really so you can get your hand up farther on the fretboard, um, or do we just want to have a non-cutaway body? So I'm gonna. That's a simple vote this time. It's just cutaway or non-cutaway. There's only two choices. It's a 50-50 chance that you're going to be right. Maybe you guys can settle this one without me having to intervene. When the glue dries, we just remove all the go bars and clean up the glue with my favorite chisel once again. Then I go out to the bandsaw and I just cut out the rough shape just to get rid of some of that excess wood out there. It's just going to get in the way from now on anyways. Then I start putting a specific tape taper down on each brace. Um, you can see I'm measuring it as we go here. And it varies. It's different between one guitar style to another. If it's a bigger body, generally it's a little bit taller. If it's a small body like this, a lot of times you can make it smaller. Use the finger plane to carve the braces. And once that's done, you can clean it up with a little bit of sandpaper. Then I measure in from the sides for where I'm going to place my scoops. And you'll see this in a second. It's generally the same distance all the way around on each brace. And here I'm scooping it out with a, an adjustable platform I have on my combo sander, which is also linked in the description down below. When the scooping's done, all we've got to do is clean up the little fuzzies off there a bit. And this back is pretty much done. It'll get another final sanding before we glue it to the rim, but for now... <laughs> okay, so thanks again for watching and make sure you subscribe and like the video, share it to your friends. If you haven't already entered the guitar giveaway, go to my website spenceracoustics.com. A little box is going to pop up and you can fill in your email and your name and then you're entered. It's as easy as that. In the next video, I'll show you the completed rosette. Also, I'll let you know if we're building a cutaway guitar or not, and we'll start bending some sides. So that's going to be kind of cool. <laughs>